Welcome to Ball Talk Deep, where we talk deep about Ball It's Andrade. And today we're going to talk about the Russell Westbrook Lakers trade and the fit. And that'll be something we'll touch on. I'm sure by now you guys have seen a ton of reactions, so it's not going to be the main focus of the video. But the main focus is going to be, as you guys can tell by the title, um, the potential finals matchup we could see if the Nets and the Lakers face each other and why that would be such a crazy thing to witness when you consider all the narratives and six people and the dynamics and those relationships involved so let's just jump into it first and foremost my thoughts on the West, russell westbrook lakers trade is russ adds more spice to la but i don't think he helps the lakers win the title but and a big but while i'm usually skeptical about westbrook fitting into a team if there's anyone who can bring out the best in him to win it's lebron and LeBron just has this history of getting people to just adapt and fit into certain roles and positions to help uh, ex uh, push the team forward as a whole and excel and reach success. And we've seen it a lot of clear examples where like Chris Bosh, Kevin Love, they're always talked about and how they shifted their gameplay. And we saw with the, the last Lakers championship team with Rondo and Howard. So something I do expect is Westbrook to have an easier time molding his game into whatever the Lakers strategy uh, is with LeBron, AD, and Westbrook, and then everyone else. And because of LeBron's presence there and, you know, his IQ and his experience playing into it. <clears throat> However, Westbrook is not a shooter, and LeBron likes to be surrounded by shooters, so maybe we'll see a Lakers attack that problem with the role players they get, although it's going to be very hard because, you know, uh, AD, LeBron, and Westbrook command quite a hefty price tag just between those three but lebron does like playing with gifted vets with experience and westbrook is that you know the guy's been a star for almost forever now and he's been in the nba for a while now he's been to the finals he's had playoff games he's played um under the brightest of spotlights and he's just push 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 he's never been able to win um but you know he's got that experience he's got a lot more experience than a lot of other guys with his amount of years and whatever and so this is definitely something LeBron's gonna like <clears throat> being able to play with and we'll see how it plays out both have good ball IQ and one thing in terms of the fit that works well with these three is that position wise they can fit all, all three on the floor seamlessly because Westbrook is a guard he can play point shooting LeBron can shift to small forward power forward if Westbrook is playing guard and then AD Rumors are that he is open to playing the five or he's willing to play the five now, but either way, he can play power forward center. So all three can be on the floor easily. And um, at the same time, LeBron wants to play point. If LeBron wants to take the ball up the court in certain situations, especially in the postseason, LeBron can be shifted to the point guard and then Westbrook could be shifted to shooting guard and then AD would be power forward center. So it works really well when you consider those three and how they fit um, position-wise, size-wise, all, size -wise, all that good stuff. So that is def definitely a positive. And something else to consider is that both now with those three, there is a nice pick and roll uh, options to play with. They got The Lakers have two really nice pick and roll situations to play with. We got LeBron and AD and now Russ and AD. And that's going to be insane. And the thing is that they all since all three can play on the floor seamlessly, um, you know, whoever... <clears throat> has the ball you never know if it's going to be lebron who decides to be at the top of the key and do the pick and roll with ad or he just switches off to russ and does it right and in the postseason when the game slows down a lot that is definitely something to watch out for because that is it's an unstoppable pick and roll with either or you know what i mean so <clears throat> definitely going to be fun to watch um but my biggest concern i mean what i've what i've noted is that the biggest winner in all of this, this entire trade, is the Lakers marketing, PR, and sales team. Because Russell, who is like the NBA fashion icon in LA, it just makes a ton of sense. It just makes so much sense off the court. And LeBron, obviously a huge star. So now we got two of the biggest stars in the entire league on the same team. This is like when Wade and LeBron were on the same team. You know what I mean? This is going to be crazy. And LeBron, who's also become somewhat of a fashion enthusiast himself iconic to those shorts that we've seen all the time now especially in memes so who knows what these two are going to be bringing out when they're walking to the court and doing you know going down to, <coughs> to games and very interesting and <clears throat> lakers revenue is going to go through the roof merch is going to go insane westbrook jerseys lakers westbrook jerseys 
yo, just imagine that. Like, people are going to buy that shit like hotcakes. And now we also got LeBron's new number Laker jerseys coming out because he's going to play in as number six, if I remember correctly, this upcoming season. So now we're getting, we're going to see a bunch of new Lakers jerseys worn by so many people. And yeah, biggest winner of all this are the Lakers, and especially their marketing team and their sales team, who's going to have, they're going to have a lot to play with because we're talking about two stars that just, you know, I don't know if they love the limelight, but they definitely embrace it. And yeah, and then AD also does it too. So that would be fun. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. The finals, if these two faced, I think would just be <clears throat> so interesting and so ironic because of the last finals we just witnessed between the Bucks and the Suns, where it was two small mid-sized teams. And now we're talking about one deep, arguably the most popular, but at the very least, one of the most popular franchises in the NBA. And then Brooklyn Nets, Brooklyn is Brooklyn. You can't argue that. So that's just going to be two star franchises against each other. And then you got these six NBA stars slash superstars against each other. We're talking about <clears throat> Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden on the Brooklyn side, and LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook on the LA side. Now, what makes this is even more interesting is one, it's already <clears throat> an easy sell because we got two star trios facing against each other that are on similar levels as a whole. As a whole, I think it can be argued they're on the similar level. So it's not one super team much better than a non-super team or another team that, you know, is not is up there but not their level. Nah, these three, pretty, pretty, you know, maybe like a hairline difference but pretty much the same. And then, more importantly, it's the, the storylines, the dynamic intercorrelated intermix between these six stars so let's get into it between these six men there's seven narratives intermingled among them all right so keep this in mind we got lebron versus Kyrie, the former teammate history lebron versus kd the greatest player of debate kd versus russ another former teammate history kd versus ad a big man challenge Kyrie versus russ a guard position challenge Kyrie versus AD, a LeBron teammate debate, and then Harden versus Russ, another former teammate history. Now, let's break it down. LeBron versus Kyrie, you know, they're always talking about the former teammate, personal uh, relationship, woes between players, and, you know, how that ended wasn't uh, as anyone would have expected, and definitely not how LeBron planned it. So that is definitely going to be brought up. Then we got LeBron versus KD, past couple of years. Uh, greatest player debate has been between these two and as LeBron ages KD was viewed as the the overall successor to that to that throne and to see them in the finals just think about it that would just be beautiful to witness beautiful to witness like I know a lot of people love the Bucks and Suns uh, finals because we're getting quote unquote real basketball just nitty gritty playing fundamentals just playing real ball now imagine that with these two guys at their like just peak NBA talent doing that you know what I mean and that's what we would get people always brought up bring up how we didn't get to witness the Brown versus Kobe this is the next next greatest thing we can get and oh, man it would just be a beautiful thing to witness and they're both similar sizes so they'll definitely be playing up against each other as well and yeah we'll see we'll see how that goes and then we got the KD versus Russ another former teammate debate uh, personal relationship uh, history that's always been brought up. Remember when uh, KD just went to the Warriors and then all that hype behind that when they were on the same all-star team. So that's going to be one. And then there's the KD versus AD big man challenge, a, a non-personal uh, di uh, dynamic. But that's going to be, they're both listed as 6'10". So we're definitely going to see uh, moments when they're playing up against each other. And just, just think about how beautiful that would be to witness. Two star incredibly talented big men who are just going at it with each other similar sizes um 80s obviously a little bit bigger kitty's a little slimmer but they'll definitely be going up against each other and just th those battles on the court in the finals would just be amazing to witness and then you got Kyrie versus russ similar thing but now we're talking about smaller men G guard position um both offensive focused pgs both can play shooting guards too and what would be really interesting about this one is um, Kyrie plays more finesse ball. Russ plays more with relying on his athletic ability and just go, 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 go. So that against each other would be really 
intriguing to watch as they're battling it out in the finals. Like, that would be insane. And then we got Kyrie versus AD, which is the LeBron teammate debate. And this is something you see a lot. And maybe Kyrie and Russ can also have this. We'll see how it goes down the line. But everybody all, like, not everybody, but a lot of people always bring up, like, who was the better LeBron teammate, or who's the more talented, or who was his best, and it was it's always Wade, uh, Kyrie, or AD. And now Kyrie versus AD, obviously they don't play the same position. They're not really going to play against each other individually on the court, but it's going to be something that be brought up. And whoever wins that finals and ho- however the performances go down, that you know series is going to be brought into that debate. So that'll be something to watch out for. That'll be very interesting. And yeah. And then there's the Harden versus Russ former teammate history. Same thing with the KD versus Russ. All three were on the same team. All have been former teammates. And it was a definitely a different time. Everybody else was on a different uh, platform, per se, a different level. And now to see one against the other will be a very interesting vibe. I can't imagine how it'd be like, but... None of these guys like hate each other, have any beef with each other, so it's not gonna be like that. Like that, this is more like for NBA fans and like what they'll have in, what we'll have in our mind. You know what I mean? And like, the, especially how the media is gonna talk about these narratives if these two make it to the finals or going on their playoff runs, and they're probably also gonna bring it up throughout the season, especially when they play against each other. Um, so yeah, it's something I want to point out because I know everybody's gonna talk about the trade and all the details about that and the fit and you know we touched on it but i really want to talk about this and i understand it's not a focus right now because one it's like a year down the line two it might not even happen you know we don't know and three we just don't know where it's gonna go like how these teams end up building up until the start of the season but yeah and one thing one last thing i want to point out is one thing that makes it very interesting between these teams too is that i don't think they'll necessarily be viewed as um, super teams per se um, because alright this is one something I really want, <clears throat> want to touch on really quick is that while it will be on the opposite spectrum of the play of the finals that we got in 2021 if these two were in the finals in 2022 um, both trios include stars in their late 20s to mid 30s so that age factor is a big thing in terms of kind of like humanizing and not seeing like two mega packed AAU teams going against each other you know what I mean and um, <clears throat> I say this because all six guys, like I said, in their late 20s to mid 30s and aren't in their like early to mid 20s of peak athletic prime. And the easiest, um, some examples I want to bring up when we t- when to support this point is think of the old four Lakers. They're not usually brought up a lot when we're considering super teams, but they had Carl Malone, Kerry Payton, Shaq, Kobe. And the reason it's not usually brought up is because Malone was 40, Peyton was 35, Shaq was 31, leaning on the heavier side, and Kobe was hitting his prime at 25. So all four weren't, you know, in their actual prime. So it's not really considered a super team. And then it's kind of the same thing gets brought up with the 08 Celtics, even though they were kind of the originator of the super team trio. And we're t- that's because Ray Allen was 32, Garnett was 31, and Pierce was 30 when that was formed. And that's towards the tail end but even then during this time early like early 30s was ready the decline like not like today's nowadays today's nba nowadays where it's like a lot of players in their early mid 30s are still hitting their strides still going at it as long as they conserve and play smart um it wasn't really a thing especially in 2000 even in 2008 <clears throat> so that's you know age factor plays into it kind of in terms of toning down the hype of what a super team usually is labeled as and the and then the reason the the team that i wanted to bring up is look at the heroes the heroes the oldest player at the time was weighed at 29 and bosch and and lebron were both 26 so they were both hitting their athletic prime and all three weren't even hitting their 30s yet when they were formed and that kind of makes sense why the heroes was like that first legitimate super team powerhouse Ever, you know what I mean? And look at these those two trios that I mentioned in the, in the Nets and the Lakers. You know, they're not that they're in terms age wise, at least. And another thing that kind of brings it down is that when you look at the recent performance, uh, Nets got knocked out in the second round by the Bucks, Lakers got knocked out in the first round by the Suns. Obviously, injuries was a play into it, but it did kind of 
tone things down. And I don't think they're going to be viewed as these two super powered uh, super teams going into it. And in that, I think it'll help in terms of lowering down the the hate if they were to meet in the finals. Of like, oh my God, two super teams. Like, oh, I don't want to see this. Like, no, I think it'll be more like two great teams with these two star trios as opposed to legitimate super teams, if that makes sense. And then it also hopes that they're both will be on a similar level, same high, similar level, as opposed to like, you know, when the Warriors had KD facing all these other teams. So that's going to be really fun to watch. Very interesting to see how it all plays out. But you guys let me know your thoughts on it. You know, I'm always intrigued. I'm always on to have combos in the com comments. And I'm just always interested to see what other people see, like think about stuff like this, especially in the macro point of view. Um, do you think the the Lakers and the Nets is the finals you would look forward to? For me, if, if it's not my team, that's probably low key the finals I'm gonna be rooting for. You guys, let me know if you guys feel the same way, um, or do you guys not want that at all, or do you guys think it's overrated, or do you guys think I'm off and like these two are two super team trios, like even though they're both you know, and I'm not saying that they aren't, but uh, you guys get what I mean. I think you guys do. If not, just ask me in the comments and I'll go into further detail about it. I don't want to make this video too long. It's already pretty long. But yeah, um, just check us out on Facebook, Twitter, all spot, all streaming podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, all the other ones. You already know what it is. Until next time, guys, take care.